This is Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners, where every week we explore strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help today's businesses put their financial picture in context. Welcome back to Create the Next. I'm Chris Bentliff, and today I'm very excited to have Juan Ramirez with us. He's a managing director in South Florida. And Juan, there's a lot to talk about, uh, particularly around business in South Florida. And the value of the fractional CFO and what does that particular professional in that particular region uh, need to have and is required to have? And what makes you so special that you get to be the managing director down there? So let's start with a quick intro- uh, introduction, um, both uh, about you, Juan, but also uh, let's let's define South Florida. Do we just mean kind of Miami-Dade or what do we mean when we're thinking about business in South Florida? Yeah, Chris, well, thank you for, for having me on. And I'm extremely excited with the uh, business opportunity that the Pro CFO Partners has in the South Florida area, which is primarily consisting of uh, Palm Beach, Broward, and Dade County, but can extend into Monroe, the Keys, as well as perhaps even the West Coast of Florida. And I wouldn't turn down any business in Florida in general, but South Florida is just a hotbed of activity right now. We're looking to to leverage off of that. Let's talk about that. What is what is some of that activity that's going on? What makes uh, what makes industry or businesses or customers unique in South Florida? Yeah, thanks. So, you know, I think there's a few things. We have a dynamic business climate in South Florida, which has both a domestic and international component to it. It also has a multilingual, diverse employee uh, base that you can leverage off of. Low taxes when you compare to other major hubs uh, like San Francisco and New York in terms of employee taxes. There is no state and employee tax, income tax, as well as no income tax on the state level for LLCs and sole proprietors. And and in my opinion, a very good quality of life with the beaches and year round activities uh, that's been attracting folks from all over now for a long time. You know, it's interesting uh, um, as you share some of that because there's an attraction, as you talk about kind of domestic, there's an attraction for just business in general to, you know, kind of set up shop or make the most of opportunities in Florida. But then there's a unique uh, interaction with the Latin American community. Do you agree? And and how do businesses take advantage of that opportunity? What do they do differently or can they do differently in South Florida to make the most of that? Yeah, you know, I think I was fortunate enough uh, to to work for three companies, U.S. based, facing Latin America, to service the Latin America clients, uh, and I think with the diverse cultures you have here, with Caribbean, Central, South American being some of the largest uh, employee uh, headcount or people that live in the, in the in the area of Miami and, and Palm Beach and South, I mean, they're poised to cu- culturally know what they need in their countries and be able to export automobiles, computers, uh, medical equipment, and speak not only one, two, three, four languages sometimes uh, that makes it easy to do business uh, with Latin America you know, in, it's, in general. We've talked a lot with Halle Fardy, for instance. She's in Chicago. She's uh, uh, a co-founder. And Nelson Tepfer, he's in New York City. Those are sort of well understood hubs of commerce and have been in, in America for you know centuries. We've got this interesting aspect in South Florida of almost a shipping lane uh, rather than maybe a rail or transit kind of kind of uh, idea that we have in some other locations. How does that, uh, I don't know, interesting position and some of the other things you're sharing, what kind of businesses are attracted there or what kind of industries are really represented? Is it heavy in tech? Is it heavy in, uh, you mentioned automobiles, is it heavy in transportation? What are some, I don't know, standout industries or verticals that are really, really thriving in South Florida? You know, I think, uh, you know, to start, you have a uh, good real estate, you have tourism, hotel and tourism, obviously. Uh, agricultural is always a, a very good uh, field. Uh, aviation is an up and coming, a lot of uh, executive airports and a lot of opportunities in the aviation space. And, uh, you know, I think in general, a lot of different industries are down here uh, that, that we can leverage and take advantage of as, as a fractional CFO so from startups all the way to companies with headquarters facing out to Latin America, as well as just domestic companies and the incubators and accelerators of which there are just so many of them. Uh, yeah. And companies relocating here like the Citadel or Goldman Sachs or expanding their offices or Blackstone for that matter. So there's a lot of opportunity covering all gamuts of the business world down here right now. I'm glad you mentioned fractional CFO. I feel like that's a good segue to what do you think is required for that professional to 
to be um, as dynamic and as present and as effective as possible? Or in other words, what should organizations be looking for in South Florida, particularly in their fractional CFO? Because it's not just a hat you put on and you go in and you do some stuff. There's an expertise required and a familiarity, as you're pointing out, with the many dynamics of South Florida. Talk to me a little bit about what kind of that ideal fractional CFO would look like for any number of these kind of verticals or companies you're talking about. Yeah, you know, it's it's a sometimes we we think that you need to speak the language, and quite frankly, it's interesting enough. A lot of the Latin American CEOs uh, that we meet or uh, speak English, and so does their middle managers as well. When you get into the lower tiers, you know, so it's not a a a need that you speak the language. We have several CFOs in South Florida under the South Florida that do not necessarily need to speak the language. So that's first and foremost. We want to attract folks that have worked in various industries and really are looking to do some more strategy work uh, versus looking in the rear view mirror, just dropping a report on a table and, and just marking time. We want to be in bed with them as far as their executive team. We want to be part of their C-suite. Uh, it doesn't hurt that you have some cultural uh, understanding of what perhaps oh, uh a cup of cafecito means in the afternoon with them to, to just break the barriers down and make it more personal. Uh, but we can definitely teach any CFO to do that if they haven't been doing that uh, in the past. It's interesting because what if I am one of these companies that uh, has an international presence, or as you're pointing out, um, has a, a Latin American presence, there's got to be an advantage to me, even if I, I don't necessarily require it. As you're pointing out, it can be really helpful to me um, if I've got somebody who does better understand the culture, is that, I would call that kind of a competitive advantage. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, Chris. It, it would be an advantage uh, that we don't have in so many other places. It would definitely be an advantage here. Which is interesting. If you're able to, you know, talk to us about what's happened in Colombia or Venezuela or Brazil or Argentina, some of the major cities that I've traveled to over the last uh, 15, 20 years. Let's talk about that a little bit. Who are you? What uh, what what kind of background is, are you coming from that uh, that makes you the managing director in South Florida? An, an interesting and exciting opportunity with ProCFO Partners. Oh, thanks. I, I would love to share that with you. I was born in Cuba. And like uh, most Cubans, we went somewhere else before coming to the U.S. I ended up in Spain. I uh, grew up educated in uh, New Jersey, uh, in the Union City, West New York area. And basically formed my whole education and my first 15 years of work experience. And then when I was at Lucent Technologies, it dawned on me that I wanted to try to learn more about my culture, use my Spanish a little bit more. And I put in my goals and objectives. I would like to do a couple of projects in Latin America. Sure enough, Lucent got me to Brazil, where I did some inventory work. And the rest is history. I came down for a two-year project with Lucent and have been here 22 years. Uh, been fortunate to work with not only Lucent or into public group, which is McCann and Foot Cone and Belding, as well as First Data, uh, both as a regional controller and as a, as a divisional CFO for them. And, and traveling over a million miles, of course, through Latin America, uh, that'll, that'll get you some good exposure to some great CEOs in the past. That's so interesting and, and uh, is such a rich sort of tapestry of experiences that I'm sure you can draw from. What have you seen change? Like if you kind of look at those 20 years or so uh, in South Florida and, you know, some of these places, Venezuela and Spain or whatever, what, what in the business realm technology comes to mind? That's an easy answer, but let's, let's, let's go deeper than that. What's, what's changed as far as you, as, as you've seen from, I don't know, the way businesses communicate with customers, the way products are received, the way businesses are run, the way strategies are executed. What is, what's some of the evolution you've seen? Yeah, I think one of the most important things that I've seen is in, uh, you know, 20 years ago when a corporate office in the U.S. would give out instructions to its employees, uh, they would just believe that an email and a stern voice would get that done. Uh, no, it was more to build that relationship, a.k.a. why the Latin America office started to spring up and 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 now culturally take that mandate from corporate and take it into Latin America basically using your relationships to get the same work done, but just not in a got to get it done atmosphere. It's it's just working together with the individuals, learning what makes them tick. That was That's the biggest evolution I, I saw before I left the whole Latin America traveling to do some of this fractional work. Interesting. And as you're working in this kind of fractional space, what kind of uh, 
through points are you seeing in the clients that you're working with? Is there a consistent sort of common denominator of challenges or of, you know, we're seeing this a lot and again and again here in South Florida where folks are trying to do X or they're struggling with Y? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, cash flow is still obviously, you know, no matter where you go, the uh, startups to mid, middle, middle com- uh, size companies, they're all looking at their cash flow. Not all of them are prepped to do a 13 week cash flow or even care to do one. And that's where we would like to come in and, and make sure that they understand what it means. They don't have time to read sometimes financial statements. So dropping that report is not not going to work. It, it basically giving them the highlights and helping them strategize and what what the next years look like, not what the rear view mirror. We got controllers and accountants that can just basically do that. It's more forward looking. And, you know, and just networking down in South Florida here, uh, it's been uh, exciting to, to just right now, we're just getting into some uh, hoteling type business or, or, or re, re, real estate investment companies that we're starting to talk to. And, and you know, the networking groups like Provisor and Invest is trying to break through some of those as well to learn what some of those new uh, issues are that they're facing as well. Interesting. It's a new market. So yeah, we're doing the new networking. Uh, And I think part and parcel to that is um, emerging talent in South Florida. It's attracting younger and younger professionals or it's keeping uh, some of its professionals. And as you talked about kind of this technology uh, incubator kind of aspect is, is, has always been healthy, but is really firing up. Are you seeing that? What are you seeing as far as sort of the talent pool for new employees or for bringing in executives what is that looking like? It's I think South Florida has an outdated notion of uh, of a certain demographic that is older than, and I don't think that's true anymore. Do you agree, or what are you seeing? Yeah, no, I definitely uh, you know agree that it's, it's getting younger. I mean, just as I give an example, I was reading the other day that in Cape Coral, across on the other side of the coast, uh, uh, thousands of millennials have been moving into that area, and eighteen percent of the population now is millennials in Cape Coral. And, and it's just fascinating to see. And I do believe some of these companies coming down, like the Goldman Sachs or, or Sentinel, are looking at that new, young, uh, attractive base that we have. And so it's no longer just the aging population. It's a lot of new influx of, of new folks, middle age coming in. I think the median age at one point was uh, 39. So it's definitely trying to revert back the other way as well now. Interesting. Uh, that for me... That kind of trend and some of these trend lines and some of the things you've shared. Let me let me ask you about your crystal wall. Where do you think business in South Florida five, 10, 20 years from now? How do you think it's evolving or will mature? What's your what's your vision for where that where companies and where industry and where business is headed in South Florida? Yeah, you know, I think they're gonna continue to leverage uh the Latin America. All, all international, uh, because we have a lot of influx of European as well. So we're going to start to continue to see the growth of, of those as economies get better in Latin America. But also, I think these companies are also going to turn and also face the U.S. with products and services. So not just in exporting out. But what else can they do for the U.S.? And I see that that trend happening as well as them, not just facing Latin America, but also let's service the U.S., which is still the one of the best economies out there that we can deal with right now. So I do believe there's, there's plenty of growth opportunities. I mean, just the other day, they were evaluating 13 incubators and accelerators. So new businesses are starting and continue to grow here in, in South Florida. What do you think as a maybe a startup, but kind of maybe even that smaller mid-market um, size, what do I need to be doing to prepare for that? How can I not be surprised by change or not be discouraged by change? But what should I be doing in my business right now so that I'm either comfortable or at the forefront of some of these evolutions that are happening? Yeah, I think uh, one of the first things you do is probably uh, if you're the right size, you call uh, Juan and and get us in there <laughs> and look at your your strategy and your plan for the next uh, one to three years. Always. That's, that's definitely very helpful. Or And I, I'm sure out of the 50 CFOs we have, we can find an industry that is covered in, in the South Florida region somewhere in our in our portfolio of, of CFOs. Uh, but, you know, I just think they need to continue to uh, to to grow out of just being a you know uh, one revenue stream company and and looking for that multi revenue stream uh, product line that they can just keep adding arsenal to their revenue lines uh, so that they don't get surprised when one revenue stream uh, dries up. I've seen I love that. that. I, yeah. I love that advice. 
one, because it taps into some of the strengths of ProCFO partners, uh, which Nelson and I, whenever we talk, he says, well, call us. That's that's the default answer, which is great. But you point out this breadth and, and width and depth of of talent of, you know, multinational and uh, 50 some folks and across the board talent, but also uh, prepared to deal with many of the eventualities that can come up as you're pointing out, maybe multiple product lines requires uh, new manufacturing processes or new supplier uh, processes or new inventory management. And those things get sophisticated and it requires uh, the right kind of skill sets to be able to strategically be involved in making those things run more smoothly. And I think part of what I'm hearing you say is it's important to have the right talent around you who can manage that stuff. Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest things is, uh, you know, using uh, what used to be your old accountant or your brother-in-law or, or sister-in-law to do uh, some of the work as you're starting up and growing uh, when in reality you do need to branch out and bring someone to at least uh, advise and look at what you're doing. Uh, don't just stay, you know, family focused, but grow and, and friendship focused. Just you know, bring talent from the outside also and find the right team. Uh, I think one of your last podcasts also had finding the right accountants. What's the right teams set up that you need uh, from the marketing side all the way down to operations and finance. Juan Ramirez is the managing director in South Florida for ProCFO Partners. And Juan, it's been a pleasure to meet you. I'm looking forward to many, many conversations to come and uh, and all the new things that are happening in South Florida. And I think there's so many more things we can touch on. Um, Climate issues are are happening in South Florida, and they happen seasonally. And what does that mean to business? And uh, where are we headed, sort of from coast to coast? Um, I think there's a lot of interesting things to touch on, and I, I'm I'm so happy to make the introduction for our audience to to you, Juan, so that you can be an expert to help us guide through some of that stuff. Thank you, Chris. I look forward to uh, being on future uh, episodes of your program as well. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Visit ProCFOPartners.com for more strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help you put your business's financial picture in context.